Now, a couple of years ago, I was a poverty-stricken student who decided to sell his body to medical science. Well, I decided to do drug tests anyway. It was all fine and dandy. You got paid, you got fed, you got used to carrying your pee around in a jug until something went wrong, at which point it all got horribly legal. And I remember thinking at the time, you know, somebody should really make a film about this. Well, guess what? Somebody has. But it wasn't me. Damn. <laughs> About ten years ago, I was playing in a band called the Strata Cruisers, and at the time we were really strapped for cash. A friend suggested we go along and do some drug trials. So we went along, found out it was for glaucoma drops. The folks were like saying, God, they're messing with your eyes, what the hell are you doing? And anyway, we got about 600 quid for that, so I managed to buy the guitar that I'd always wanted. Afterwards, we all went along to a cafe, and everyone's like looking at us because we've got this yellow dye all running down our faces, and they're like, what's going on here? If we're going to accept that drugs are going to be part of uh, modern medicine, then the drugs have to be tested. And as such, the first consumers of these drugs must be prepared to run a certain risk. New drugs and medicines are developed to combat disease and ill health and to raise the quality of life for all. However, in the early 60s, the appalling potential of drug-induced disease was realised worldwide through the horrendous consequences of the morning sickness drug thalidomide. Committees to regulate the safety of new medicines are set up in the UK and around the world. Human testing is the final stage in the development necessary to bring a new drug from the test tube the chemist's shop. You might say that participants in trials sell themselves to science. They know what they're doing to a degree and they know what they're going to be paid for it and the decision is theirs. I think drug trials are fine. When I was a student we made um, a few bob enabled us to go on holiday and things like that and uh, I knew exactly the state of my own health. I was having medical checkups every week, you know, it was a good thing. I've seen an advert in The Big Issue um, which offered loads of money to basically take part in these trials but I haven't actually made the decision to do it yet or got any further with it because everybody I speak to seems to just be putting me off all the time just saying that you're mad to do it and you're taking these things you don't know what they are or what they'll do to you. I guess the main reason why I do it as well as many other people do it, especially a lot of travellers, is because it's really good money. I did a 36 day trial for £2,800 which got me around quite a bit. I've been on the road for two and a half years, so drug tests are really handy when you're travelling. You can just sort of pick up a bit of cash and then go off and spend it and come back and find another trial and off you go again. Between us we've taken part in about 15 trials over the past six years and at various clinics you meet people who have done them at clinics all over the world and through doing this we've drawn on our experiences and basically written a guide to taking part in these trials. We set up a business to publish it we um, advertise in national magazines. It's partly to provide an information service for people who are interested and it allays people's myths about what it's like to take part as a volunteer. When I've done trials, most people I've met have really enjoyed doing it. One of the first trials I did was a, a marijuana test where you actually had to play video games, pretend you were driving cars to see if it affected your ability. It was pretty good, you got all the food you could eat and all the video games you could do all day. And the object of the exercise was is to sit there with a the steering wheel and try and keep this little dot between two moving lines. If you hit the wall it made a little beep, but the trouble is after you smoke for a while you sort of forget the object of the exercise and you start playing tunes on the wall. It's sort of like beep 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 boom boom boom. Yeah, I did um, a couple of drug trials about, uh, about 10 years ago, and uh, one of them involved uh, keeping uh, samples of my own feces. I had to keep them for about six weeks. Uh, this one time I was staying at my brother's, and uh, I left the samples on the kitchen table. We went out. Um, his girlfriend came in, thought I'd be making some chutney at the time, and she opened them up to have a bit of a sniff of, uh, you know, anyway, you should have seen the look on her face when she realised what it was. The guy I was sharing the room with me is a Colombian guy who didn't speak much English at all. And so I had to try and explain to him that he just put his name down for a two-week suppository test. There was a trial in an adjacent ward in London um, that they were doing electrodes strapped to people's heads to test some kind of reaction with the eyes. Um, and it was quite weird because these guys were walking around with huge skull caps and computer link-ups 
hanging around the back of their head so they'd plug them into a computer every couple of hours to test their reactions, which was quite strange, I guess. I heard about this one guy and um, the trial he was actually in was for antidepressants. They had us wired up to electrodes to our head and we also had a gauge to our penis which um, measured the frequency of our erections. Um, apparently we were having loads more than normal. Screening volunteers for suitability usually includes blood and urine tests to exclude the possibility of disease or the consumption of illegal drugs or alcohol. This one chap came into the ward one day and he'd like had 16 units of alcohol the night before and they didn't pick that up. A lot of lads used to obviously, you know, have a, uh, smoke a little bit of dope now and again. Um, but the problem was is that they could tell three weeks afterwards if you just did one drag of a joint, you know. So a lot of people did get booted off for um, taking drugs. This guy came up to me the other day. Um, the nurse obviously wanted to test him for some other drugs or something, asked him for a urine sample. And he just came up to me and asked me to do one for him. And I just like said sorry and I said I'm not going to do it. I went for one in Germany but unfortunately they rejected me because I was a vegetarian. So I learned from that. About six months later I tried to go back again and I thought this time I won't tell them I'm a vegetarian. But this time they rejected me because I was allergic to dust. Next time I go back I know what to say. It may be an idea to perhaps establish a register for participants in trials to avoid the possibility of uh, people jumping from one trial to another onto the next, not only because of the contamination and the, the distortion it might provide in the results of trials, but for their, their own health as well. Whenever you go for a study at a clinic, you're always going to meet some person whose best mate's brother's cousin has just been on a study and had the heart stopped or the toes chopped off. That is complete rubbish. Well, my girlfriend and I left college a couple of years ago and had this idea that we wanted to set up a cafe bar bookshop, but we had no money at the time and we didn't want to have to work for anyone else. And we heard about drug research trials, so we both went and did a flu trial. That was fine. Then I went and did a trial for antidepressants. But when I came out of hospital a couple of weeks later, I felt a bit kind of spaced out and didn't really feel that I fit back in and really just kind of out of sync with the way things were going. The last trial I did, uh, there was a guy on the ward who, whose whole side of his body um, blew up like a balloon, basically reacted to the drug pretty badly. Today, I mean, I had a nurse, she sort of injected me there, but I think she missed the vein because nothing was coming out. And she was like just digging around trying to find the vein and it was just so sore. If you can catch it, I've got few scars from uh, from one trial on this one and my, my current bruise from the last couple of blood samples on the other one. And so she went over to this arm and she was digging around in there as well. But this arm's like still quite a bit sore now, but I mean that's that's like the worst. The worst you come out with is maybe slight bruising, you look like a drug addict for a while and that's it. The one trial that I did when I got the injection every morning for anti-leukemia and the bone they actually took a corkscrew sort of looking needle. They ended up taking bone marrow out of my hip bone. And, um, I was actually told that it was the same as giving blood. It looked the same and it was the same amount of pain, but it was actually 10 times worse than the giving the blood. Every time I went for a nurse and asked for some kind of treatment, she just, you know, I'd expected them to give me least, less of the uh, drug, but they would just give me more and more paracetamols. Organizers of clinical trials like to insist that participants wait a three month period between finishing one trial and starting another. This is referred to as a washout period because they want the effects of the medication in the first trial not to be carried over into the next trial and perhaps to contaminate it. Because I've just got my local GP, one of the hospitals found out they had done a trial with another hospital under the three month gap. That hospital told a few other hospitals and unfortunately I got blacklisted from a couple of them. The difference with Aussies and New Zealand is a lot of the travellers come to England, they sign on with a local GP, which means they've got a clean medical record, um, do a drugs trial, get enough money to go to another country under the required limit of three months. Every pharmacologically active medicine has the potential to cause side effects. Well, I'm not worried about side effects because as far as I'm concerned that's part of the occupational hazards and why you get paid. As far as long-term side effects go, when you go for a screening, 
you actually have all the risks explained and you sign insurance documents with the doctor present. They're not disclaimers, they don't like list it's the like, opposite to a disclaimer. Yeah, it's the opposite yeah. to a disclaimer. If you can prove anything down the line was as a result of your trial, then they'll pay compensation decided by an English court of law. Which I mean, you'd get for similar injuries. Yeah, I mean there's a problem, you'd have to prove it was due to the experiment you took part on, but generally, due to the risks, it's not an issue. You don't really consider that when you take part. Yeah. In the short term, any risks that they might run, they would be compensated for. But the long-term risks, they don't really know. It might be difficult 15 or 20 years later to establish that a particular ill effect was caused by a trial 20 or 15 years earlier, and they might have a legal battle on their hands. I know that I'll be compensated should I have any ill effects on the drug trial itself, but I'm not quite sure what would happen in the long term. Um, where would I stand legally? It makes you start to think. Um, I don't actually want to think about it. Taking a medicine, and particularly a new medicine, is a balance of risks and benefits. And the objective of clinical research is to ensure that the risk-benefit ratio of any new medicine is firmly on the side of therapeutic benefit, outweighing potential risks. In my opinion, clinical studies are today very well controlled and safe for all those who participate. The only thing is like so many people have got bad feelings about it, like my mum, she would freak out if she knew I was doing it. I'd recommend it if you're, if you're strapped for cash, um, because it's quite an easy way to earn a large amount of cash in a very short amount of time. It's good, it depends how desperate you are really, I guess. Although medical trials are as safe as they can be, I think I would be a little unhappy if one of my sons were to undergo one of these trials, largely because I think the potential risks in the long term are actually unknown. Initially when we started taking part in trials, we did it to leave our bets because we were students, but now basically we spend the money on things we enjoy. Yeah, we like to surf and skate. At the moment we're into, well into snowboarding. Um, big problem for most people, it isn't for everybody, they've got to abstain from social drugs and stuff. Our biggest problem is uh, abstaining from alcohol 48 hours before the medical. Neil Harris's lab rat. That's it. Join us next week when we here at First Take will be testing out more potentially dangerous new filmmakers on you, the unsuspecting public. Thank you for your cooperation. <laughs>